This podcast is brought to you by ICT4D.at and inspired by Farm Radio. Hello, listener. This is Podcast Farms, How to Podcast. This is your host, Lydia, with my co host, Juliana. And Noah. It's all about kickstarting your podcast journey from beginning to the end. We'll all be taking turns diving deeper into different aspects of podcasting. Hello, listener. This is Podcast Farms How to Podcast, the show where we dive into all things podcasting. I'm your host for today, Lydia, and on today's episode, we're going to tackle topics like how to structure your podcast, personas, what they are, and how to find yours. And finally, an overview of the workload associated with the making of a podcast. Whether you're a seasoned content creator or just getting started, this episode is packed with valuable insights to guide you on your podcasting journey. First, I'll be covering how to structure your podcast. Structuring your podcast is essential to keep your episodes organized, engaging, and easy for listeners to follow. Let me add a note here. Yes, you can add more steps, but these are the fundamentals of creating your own structure. First step is an introduction. Start with a brief introduction that includes your podcast's name, your name, and a short description of what the episode will cover. Set the tone and give the listeners a sense of what to expect. So after introduction, we go to opening segment, which is going to be the first segment of the episode. You need to have a constant opening segment that sets the stage. This could be a catchphrase, a quick update, or a teaser for the main topic. Next up is the main content. This is the core of your episode. Break down the main topic into segments or sections for better organization. You can use storytelling, examples, statistics, or interviews to provide depth and engagement. Keep the content focused and avoid going off topic. In order to make an episode digestible and enjoyable, you will have to break it down into segments and provide breaks and transitions. Use transition or brief breaks to move between different sections or segments within the main content. This helps maintain a smooth flow and helps keep the listeners engaged. If you happen to have sponsorships or advertisements, you can include them in a dedicated segment. Make sure to be transparent and authentic about your sponsorship because it could affect your credibility After you've had your podcast for a while and gather some listeners, you can add a segment dedicated to your listener engagement. This is a section where you address listener feedback, questions, or comments from past episodes. This will help you build a sense of community and connection with your audience. If you've decided to include expert interviews or guest segments into your episode, you'll need to allocate a specific time for them within the episode. You'll need to introduce the guests and explain the purpose of the interview and how it connects with the main topic of the day. When you pass the half point of your episode, you'll slowly need to work on your wrap up. Summarize the main points of the episode and emphasize key takeaways. You can also include a call to action, such as asking listeners to subscribe, rate, review, or visit your website. Now that I've mentioned having a website, I would ask you to consider creating a website or a landing page for your podcast. This will provide a central place for listeners to find information about your show and episodes. So next up is closing segment. Having a constant closing segment that wraps up the episode, reinforces podcast brand, and maybe a teaser for the next episode would give the episode consistency. And finally, outro and sign-offs. You'll thank your listeners for tuning in and provide social media handles, website information, or any other info you'd like to communicate with your audience. Remember, this structure is just a guideline. You can customize it based on your podcast format, style, and content. The key here is to create a flow that works for you and provides a coherent and engaging experience for your listeners. Coming up, we'll be discussing personas. When we mention a persona in relation to your podcast, we mean two things. 
Firstly, your podcast's persona and your listener persona. Let's start first with your podcast's persona. There are many personas you can adapt when you're considering creating your own podcast. You can have an educational podcast that aims to teach listeners about specific subjects or topics, or an interview-based podcast, which features interviews with guests, experts, or individuals sharing their experiences and insights. Another option for you could be a storytelling podcast. These podcasts tell compelling stories often using sound effects and immersive storytelling techniques. You can also try a conversational podcast where hosts engage in casual and dynamic discussions about various subjects. Or, if you're interested in current events, your podcast can provide updates and in-depth analysis on recent news and current affairs. Or you can do a total 180 and do a fictional style podcasting where you tell fictional stories in genres like drama, science fiction, horror, and more. Other podcasting identities include comedy, true crime, self-help and motivational, history, technology, health and wellness-based, music, cultural, parenting and family-based, travel, food and cooking, sports, science and nature, and business and entrepreneurship. So, remember, these identities can sometimes overlap or be combined in a creative way, leading to a wide range of podcasting formats and styles. The second aspect of a podcast persona is the listener or audience persona. These are fictional representations of your target audience. Creating personas helps you better understand your listeners' preferences, behaviors, needs, which can guide your content creation and marketing strategies. Here, I'll be helping you develop your podcast personas in relation to your audience. The first step is research and identification. Gather data through surveys, social media insights, and statistics to better understand your existing and potential listeners. Look for commonalities and patterns. Then, divide your potential audience into distinct segments based on demographics, interests, and behaviors. You should include information like age, gender, occupation, hobbies, challenges, and goals when you're developing a profile. Ask yourself what kind of format and tone your listeners would prefer. Do they seem to enjoy interviews, storytelling, educational content, or a mix of these? You should also ask what kind of content your personas engage with, what platforms they use, and how they consume podcasts. Are they avid listeners during commutes, or do they prefer shorter episodes during workouts? Using the answers you get from all these questions, map your podcast episodes to the interests, goals, and challenges of each persona. And finally, marketing to your personas. Work on crafting marketing messages and strategies that appeal to each persona. Understand where the personas hang out online. Are they active on social media, forums, or specific podcast platforms? All this will increase the likelihood of attracting and retaining listeners. Creating a podcast persona allows you to connect with the audience in a deeper level and tailor your content to meet their preferences. It's important to regularly revisit and update your personas as your podcast evolves and audiences grow. Coming up, I'll be covering the workload associated with podcasting. As you may have guessed by now, running a podcast involves several tasks that collectively contribute to the workload. Here's an overview of the typical workload associated with podcasting. First up is content planning. This covers brainstorming episode ideas, researching topics and guests, and outlining episode scripts or content structure. Second up is recording. This covers setting up your recording equipment and recording your episodes, whether it's interviews, discussions, or a monologue. Third up is editing and production. This involves reviewing and editing raw recordings and balancing audio levels and removing mistakes. It also involves adding intro, outro, and sound effects. Another workload is graphics and branding. This entails designing cover art, social media graphics, and promotional material. You'll also need to upload and publish. This means scheduling episodes for release and uploading finished episodes to a podcast hosting platform. This also means adding show notes, descriptions, and metadata. 
For clarification, metadata refers to descriptive or structural information that provides context and details about data. Another piece of work is promotion and marketing. This means creating social media posts and content teasers, interacting with listeners on social media, and collaborating with other podcasters or influencers. You will also need to engage with audiences. This can mean responding to listener comments, reviews, and feedback, or addressing listener questions and suggestions. Another responsibility of a podcaster is analytics and monitoring. This involves tracking podcast performance matrix, which involves downloads and other engagements, and monitoring trends and adapting strategies based on analytics. Next step is guest coordination, if applicable. What that means is if you decide to have a guest. This requires you to identify potential guests, schedule interviews, and coordinate logistics. The next piece of work is website or blog maintenance, if applicable. You need to manage and update your podcast website or blog by posting show notes, transcripts, and additional content. Next up is networking and collaboration. This means attending podcast events and collaborating with other podcasters and experts. You will also need to monetize if applicable. This will entail exploring sponsorship or advertising opportunities. This can also mean managing Patreons or other subscription-based platforms. And finally, research and learning. This means staying updated on podcasting trends and best practices, while also learning new skills like audio editing and marketing. The workload can vary based on factors like episode frequency, podcast format, team size, and the level of production quality. Some podcasters handle all tasks themselves, while others may delegate or outsource certain aspects of the process to other people. It's important to find a balance that works for you and aligns with your podcast goals. I would recommend you tell potential listeners up front what they will gain by listening to your show. If you're going to help them solve a problem they have, explain exactly how you're going to do that. If you're going to inspire them, tell them how. And if you want to make them laugh, use humor in your show's description. For example, our podcast revolves around educating people on podcasting while we're educating ourselves on the same subject matter. Hence, our description will hint at our status as beginner podcasters, as well as the podcast's educational persona. I would also recommend that you keep your podcast descriptions between 600 and 900 characters or between 120 to 170 words. Some hosting services allow 4,000 character long descriptions. That's much too long for an effective podcast description. Be concise and meaningful with the words you choose to describe your podcast. And with that final piece of information, I conclude this episode. Thanks for tuning in to Podcast Farms How to Podcast. Before we wrap up today's episode, I wanted to remind you about some valuable resources and ways to stay engaged. First off, if you found today's conversation inspiring and want to dig deeper, be sure to check out our detailed show notes. And if you're eager to explore the articles, books, websites we discussed, don't worry, we've got you covered. Head over to ict4d.at under podcast form to access a curated list of all the resources we mentioned today. And lastly, if you know someone who would benefit from the knowledge shared on this episode, don't hesitate to share with them. Your recommendation can make a positive impact on their learning journey. Before I go, here's a sneak peek from our next episode, where my co-host Juliana discusses music for your podcasts. Picture this, you're watching a horror movie, but there is no music. I can guarantee you it's not gonna be good. Same with every other movie, music is very important to convey emotion or draw attention to the scene. Or you're watching TV or listening to the radio and suddenly an ad comes on and you know exactly what product they are advertising because you know the music. Did that ever happen to you? Well everyone, that's a wrap for today. Remember, the learning doesn't stop here. 
dive into those show notes, explore the resources, and join us on our next episode.